let's spend about five minutes or so unpacking value investing and answering the question, is value investing dead? So yeah, where, where, sure. do we, where do we want to start? Is well, it dead? <laughs> hold on. Before Owen gives the technical answer, Bryce, is value investing dead? No. There we go. Move on. What's so that's what you can expect side? from the... That's the quality, quality content you can expect from this course. All right, Owen. Uh, talk us through it. It's uh, obviously the last sort of 10 years of our investing lives have been dominated by large cap growth stocks. The, uh, the value investor has underperformed the market. We've had a few on equity mates and... God, it's tough to be a value investor when growth is ripping. But is it mm. dead as a philosophy? Is value investing dead? I, I, I would agree with Bryce. I don't think so. Um, and I, I think to to understand this, like we've got to go back to what is value investing. And, and value investing is just the concept of buying something for less than it's worth. And if we go right back to the beginning, like the forefathers of value investing, uh, Ben Graham and, and Warren Buffett, what we've seen is an evolution of value investing. So in the beginning, it was try to buy companies where the total value of the company was worth less than the cash they had in the bank. So that was like during depression era stuff where Ben Graham could just run a statistical analysis using a pen and paper or pencil and paper to figure out what was cheap. Warren Buffett then came along and started to take that to the next level and think about what he calls owner earnings, which is basically like dividends plus the increase in assets of a company. So as the company gets more valuable, does it buy more buildings, properties, et cetera? Then Charlie Munger met with Warren Buffett. And this is where things started to get really interesting. It kind of moves us into the modern era of value investing, which is Charlie Munger basically taught Warren Buffett, buy wonderful companies at a fair price. Don't buy those cheap cigar butts that Ben Graham taught you about. Buy companies that you can hold for 10 or 20 years, companies that will keep compounding. And that's what we know today as growth stocks. So the companies that, you know, you know Amazon, uh, Google, uh, Apple, all these businesses started off as much smaller businesses and they had intrinsic values at the time or valuations that were much lower than they are today. And that's what we've seen the evolution over time. One of the questions I always get is, is discounted cash flow analysis dead? That's called DCF analysis. It's what we teach in the course. Um, the, the reality is no, because at the end of the day, something is only worth what you get back from it. Whether you, However you're accounting for that, it's only worth what you, someone will buy it from you in the future or the dividends you receive. So, you know, regardless of whether you're investing in meme stocks, you're still going to get something back in the future. So we try and estimate what that probability well, is. It depends what meme stock. <laughs> well, it, it, there's some stocks that, you know, just keep going down and become an even bigger meme. Um, but, you know, and then I think one thing that's worth talking about is kind of the art of value investing. So there's like the right brain, left brain. Well, um, before, before we move too far into that, I guess the question that comes out of... Uh, what you've just said there is maybe the, the the right question isn't is value investing dead the right question is is value investing a useful label because uh you know we did an mm. episode on get started investing a few weeks ago um where we spoke about you don't have to pick a side there's you know active v passive value v growth there's all these debates in the investing world and a lot of them at the end of the day don't really matter um and no. you can be on both sides of them and it just feels like from what you've just said there the idea of value and growth being like two distinct camps constantly at war disagreeing on the right way to invest is just a not a useful distinction um in 2022 yeah and that's fair like i had it put to me that you know old value investing the way we were taught is buy a dollar for 60 cents mm. but the modern i guess take on that is buy a dollar for a dollar that goes to a dollar 10 mm. so Buy something that increases in value and hold on to it. And I think, yeah, you know, you're spot on. Like we often draw these lines in investing. We give ourselves false choices. A false choice is like a, I guess, a, a shortcoming of our brains where we think, oh, you know, I need to turn left or right because I can't go straight ahead when both roads would meet in the end anyway. And you've seen the tortilla ad or the, the taco ad where the young Mexican girl goes, why not have both? Um and hard or soft shells, it doesn't matter. It's still a taco at the end of the day. And it's, you can have both because they value or growth investing, they're one and the same. Again, it just comes back to what we're buying it for versus what we get back. 